So Louie and Katie are busy assembling extractors because we're selling extractors. And it's because it's honey extracting season. But the real reason I'm here, Louie, get Louie's attention. Louie, can we talk about refractometers? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think now's the time. We're going to try to put up a little video on it. And uh, um, so get out your refractometer and we'll talk about it. Uh, Bob and Louie here with Blue Ridge Honey Company. Seth is running the camera back there. Um, we're going to talk about refractometers today. I think this is an important tool that most beekeepers don't utilize and they should. It's kind of fun and kind of sad all at the same time when we have brand new beekeepers come into our store with their first crop of honey and they're very proud of it. It looks beautiful and it tastes wonderful and they want us to taste it and have fun with it. And Louie and I can uh, just touch it. We quite often immediately realize that it's too thin. And rather than try to break that news one-on-one uh, -on -one to the new beekeeper, I'll ask this question. I'll say, have you a refractometer and have you ever tried it on your honey? And most newer beekeepers don't have one, and of course the answer is no. So I let the refractometer do the talking. I'll go get, uh, Louie keeps a couple right here at his desk. This is the one he uses most commonly. This is the one we sell in the store, and they're almost identical and we'll take in the refractometer and test their honey and let them look at it and quite often they're just very shocked to find out that their honey is 19%, 20, 22, just crazy numbers and of course it's going to ferment in a heartbeat at that. Uh, most beekeeping books will tell you that any honey that is 18.6% moisture or lower will not ferment and that's a half truth, that's a generalization. There's always an equation when we're talking about honey and changes that honey can go through and with uh, fermentation it has to do not only with the moisture but with the yeast spore content. Honey that has a very high yeast spore content can ferment at uh, moisture percentages much lower than 18.6 and an example of this was three years ago I bought some cabbage palm honey not knowing uh, that it was uh, very susceptible to fermenting. I bought it and it was 17.5 percent moisture and it fermented. And since then I've learned that uh, cabbage palm honey has an extremely high yeast spore content, whereas something like mangrove won't ferment at 19%. So it depends on the honey. We like to make sure that every honey that leaves our building is at least 18% or lower. We just extracted uh, some of our spring crop and we, ex we measured it at 16.5% moisture because we put our honey super through a drying room process before we extract and I'll put, at the end of this video I will put a link to that video so people can look at how we dry our honey before we extract. And uh, every load of honey that comes in here, all of our honey, every semi load of honey that we purchase, Louie does a test on it. And he has a log book, he has a bunch of books over here. And uh, he has to put down, for the inspector, he has to put down the reading for the moisture on everything that comes in here. So he keeps very close track of it. And I'm looking at this and I'm seeing number 17-2, 16-2, 17-8, 16-9, 16-1, 18-1. 18 is uh, the highest, so mm -hmm. the honey that's been coming in here lately is in really good shape. Occasionally we do get honey that's too thin. But an important tool for us is this refractometer. And Louie has a trick up his sleeve that uh, is pretty interesting. The type of refractometer that he is using that we are selling in our store, which is this blue little box here, not only measures the uh, water content in honey, but it measures bricks. That's spelled B-R-I-X. You can go online and see exactly what that means. And because it has that brick scale on there, he can calibrate his refractometer 
with extra virgin olive oil. So um, you'll see your free refractometer. So it has this little screw. It comes with a little screwdriver, and yep. you can calibrate it to whatever you're reading on the scale. So the brick scale goes, it's a completely different set of numbers. When you look through this refractometer, on one side you see the moisture content percentage, and on the other side you see the bricks numbers. And I got a picture of it. You got a picture yes. of it? Yes, yeah, with my phone. Okay, it, we'll, it, we'll slip that in the video. Yeah. I tried with this camera, yeah, I couldn't pull it before off. And after. Okay, okay, cool, cool, we'll, th we'll put that in. So he puts, what, what's the number? If you put extra olive, extra virgin olive oil mm -hmm. on this tool, what number are you calibrating? Well, it can to? be range, range up to 71 on the birth scale, 71, point, 71 or 72, but usually 71.5 is about the best way I would put it at. So 71.5 should be at. But it's, it's in between 71 and 72. Okay, yeah. So Louis calibrates this tool a lot. It's, it's something we're supposed to do. Once to a do. month. Once a month, yeah. So we're always on the money with our uh, moisture in that. So why don't you demonstrate how you do yeah, that? Sure. So you're going to have to turn this way so the microphone will pick you up. Yep. Uh, I want to go ahead and pour some olive oil in here so it'll be easy to get out of the bottle there. It's, it's, it runs out quick. So I'll just put some on my finger here. Just cover the whole prism right there. Make sure you have the on there. Jesse, could you grab a paper towel? Yeah, please. Okay, thank you. Shut it. You want to shut it and make sure you get all the air bubbles out of it so it'll be you know, nice and smooth. That's what you're doing. And you can adjust this to your eye level from the eye sight. And it's reading. Let's see. Right at. Yeah. It's reading right at 72. 72. Mm -hmm. You're happy with that. That yep. should get us in. That gets yep. us within a and half see, of I, a See, I have adjusted this month, so I actually, I like to bring it back to like 71.5, 71, 71 half. Yeah. Anyway, uh, not all refractometers give you that ability. Um, many of them, most of them, honestly, don't show the brick scale, but this one happens to do that. That's one of the reasons we like this one, and that's one of the reasons we uh, carry it in our store. These uh, refractometers do come with a calibration fluid, mm -hmm. but it runs out pretty quick, and uh, we like the olive oil thing. It really works. Yeah, good. it's better, it, um, and, and when you calibrate, most every instruction is go by the brick scale. Uh, hardly everyone goes by the moisture scale. I don't know why, but that's what they go by. Yeah. And so it's so best to use one that has a brick scale on it. Wipe that off, and we'll show put the honey on there, too. Ideally, you want to clean that. We're, this is quick and easy. Yeah, it's just a quick. Usually, we get this real clean before we test on it. Used to like a couple drops. Okay. This is our sour wood from last year. Sweat it on it real good. So that's that. Get all the air out of it. You just kind of point it towards a, a light source, and you get yeah, you really good reading. Yeah, you can go just to the outside. And that reads at 16. 16. I yeah. like 16. 16 yeah. is a good place 16 to be. Good. Yeah. Not only does it completely eliminate the possibility of fermentation, but if you take this exact same honey and put it in front of a customer and let them taste this honey at 16 or this honey at 18.5, every single person will say this is. They'll simply say this is better honey. When it's thicker, it has more character. The uh, the, the, the flavor comes through better. Well, what I've seen on pay um, and you know, what I learned is that um, uh, grade A honey is like 17 on higher. Grade B honey below that, and okay. then you got C down low. What's from okay. it? Yeah, thick honey's good. It's stable, doesn't ferment, and quite frankly, it just tastes better. And every time you want, you, like you said, you should recalibrate just a uh, uh, refract on. Uh, Refractometers, can't say the word. Refractometers. <laughs> Refractometers. Yeah. Uh, at least uh, when, if you ever drop it, weather change, the temperature changes. Uh, and oh, always make yeah. sure that you have the same temperature, that, that your honey and the refractometer is on the same temperature, the room temperature, when you do it. Otherwise, the breeding will be off. Yeah, thank you. I forgot about that. Yeah, if you have warm honey and a cold tool, mm -hmm. you'll get a complete incorrect reading. Right. Mm. All right. Thanks, Louie. Yeah. 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 Thank you.
Well, the first load of honey of the season, the honey purchasing season has begun. This comes from John Knox in Branford, Florida. Mixture of holly and gallberry and nice light honey, spring honey down there. It's the first load of the season. Been talking to several people. We'll have plenty coming over the next few weeks. South Georgia. Looking forward to getting some South Georgia. We actually have a label for South Georgia wildflower that we put in the supermarkets and it's a pretty good seller. It's good honey. And this particular load has come out of North Florida and it'll be part of what we blend with. Anyway, just thought I'd report the honey buying season has begun. Seth is here. He's been busy extracting honey and he's selling me some honey. So far I've gotten two drums and now four buckets from him. So, and it's good honey. Northeast Georgia honey. Yes, sir. And so Seth's getting a good dose of extracting these days. Yep. Messy work, huh, Seth? Oh, Lord, yeah.